How do we start? Uh, What's up, folks? <laughs> Chat or Tim? <laughs> no, switch sides. Yeah, okay. switch it up today. <laughs> uh, yeah, here doing the review of their Japanese airbrushes, like the Mr. Hobby, Ganze, uh, whatever we call them, the Mr. Pro, Mr. Procon. Black so many names, <laughs> but those airbrushes from uh, Japan actually, and um, I'm getting a new ones here. Okay, you're getting used ones from the display. There's two models in the Platinum series. Uh, 289, 270, mm -hmm. 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So you have both of them. I have just, uh, which one I got? I got a 289, which is 0.3 millimeter. And I do think it's one of the best choices for if you just buy the first airbrush or you just need one airbrush for general use, you know, from detail to some of the, some of the, like the background spray. 0.3, super quality, or to a uh, little more depth review for this. And uh, yeah. what, unboxing? Unboxing, oh yeah. That's that's the box, okay? You have the airbrush in the back, uh, comes with the air hose, uh, you have branch inside, and the regulator for, what was it, it's a spray can? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this one actually does have it. <laughs> yes, this one does have it, and uh, it's hot packaged. I mean, there's nothing special here, just a Pretty good package, uh, security locked in there. Have an air hose there, uh, air can and adapter. I'm not sure if they somebody gonna use it. I mean, we have those air cans in stock sometimes, not now. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Yeah, they are in stock. Yeah, right I think now. they're out of stock, yeah. But anyway, so not especially behind the package, but the airbrush itself is really, really nice uh, piece of uh, equipment, I'll say. Yeah? A Japanese tool for a little over 100 bucks. That's a steal. Okay, so uh, don't get wrong about this a little adapter. You can unscrew it and you'll have the standard 1 8 which you can go to most of their houses. Mm -hmm. You can say, I, I know some people are calling us, it's not fitting. Yeah. Remove it. It'll fit. Yeah, you can unscrew it, it's not going to cause any damage and it's going to get you what you really need, which is that 8 inch threading. Yeah, so. Uh, Show a little difference between the two. Yeah, uh, so here's the 289 and below is the 270. Um, as you can see, the only difference here is the 270 has some, we'll call them nice little ridges kind of milled into the color cup, um, which actually, you know, I do see the benefit to there is if you're working without the lid, that might pick up the paint that spills over the edge and hold on to it a little bit better. But other than that, my guess is the only reason that's there is just to kind of separate the two models of the airbrush. Um, I didn't even think about a stopping paint. Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah, the, that's a good guess. That's the only thing I can think of. Um, other than that, they are identical. Of course, the PS289 is a 0.3, 270 is a 0.2. Uh, so I'll go ahead and bust apart the 270 here. So I'll go ahead and remove the handle, which also is adjustable. Uh, I know you guys. Some of you use it, some of you don't. You can take it right off if you want to. So we'll get that back in there. Okay, then we're gonna take the needle chuck screw, remove that, and this shouldn't have any tension. Nope, it's good, it's gonna pull right out. Oop, a little bit, that's okay. Oh man. Look at that. Yeah, this came from one of the shows we recently went. Yeah. So this do get cleaning. used heavily. <laughs> Uh, lid, always easy to remove. Set it aside, safekeeping. And now we're gonna, oh, wow. Okay, there we go. And this is like the needle spring housing. Um, you can adjust this a little bit to kind of mess with your trigger tension. So we'll pull this out. And back lever came out with it. So you just pull the back lever. Again, it's attached. You get your spring and the housing. Now you can just pull the trigger out, and unlike the 770, this is the, the pin's actually connected. So on the 770, this is two separate pieces. On the Platinum, it's one piece. Um, you could lube up right here, kind of help with the movement. Yeah, it's easier to assemble, but uh, I mean, it's really, really a little metal like feel when you, when you press the trigger and it's, uh, they pull the trigger because of this connection, it can little feel it, but I mean, yeah. it's, it's nothing. So then you got the crown style protective cap, just unscrews. Yeah, I'm trying to swipe that off there. Um, all right, and then we'll pull the air cap. 
boom, there's the air cap. Now you're left with your nozzle. This is the nozzle removal tool from the maintenance kit. I can't remember the part number, yeah. but there'll be a link in the description. This is a lifesaver. Instead of using the wrench that's included, it's just really easy. Line it up, give it a little twist. Nozzles out, holds in place, pretty handy. Um, then you can also remove the head on these. And again, the thing to watch out for is the O-ring that is stuck in the body. Usually they're on the head. If they swell a little bit, they're going to stick in the body. It's not a big deal. You just want to make sure it's in place and that it's not damaged. Um, That's actually a big part of the design, this uh, additional piece, which gets your uh, softer and like more uh, balanced air going on. Yeah, the brush. absolutely. And that's similar to the 770 as well, where it's got the three channels. Um, and we know what, we'll probably bring another video down the road showing how you can do some something different with this airbrush mm -hmm. and the 770. Um, but at this point, we are fully broken down except for the packing screw, which again, no name tool, really helpful for this. And it's there, a couple of turns. And it's still in there. It's coming, guys, I swear. And there's that. Oh. Packing screw with your PTFE seal. <laughs> yeah, they're working hard. I mean, we really use them when uh, they go to shows and spraying. Uh... Wait, and you know the best part, though? It's dirty, but I guarantee you I could put paint in this and it would still spray. That's These things are incredible. Um, and now, with the packing seal removed, that's all you're left with. Everything's taken apart. Um, so it's really simple. It's really straightforward. Um, what about air valve? Well, air valve on this. I mean, another tool by no name. Another tool by no name. Actually, part of the set. It's a two tool set. Um, uh, there we go. Mm -hmm. And I think all the parts in the valve are uh, actually the standards between all the air brushes. Yeah. You know what? Except for this, actually. I just remember by the size, this uh, little screw is different, the closing screw. Mm. So yeah, the rods right. and the uh, springs are the same for all the, like then a regular trigger brush. So, yeah. there we go. Now that finishes it. <laughs> and uh, I mean, yeah, it's it's a very, like, I think you said it best. There, I don't think anybody is really making an airbrush that's so general purpose. It's easy to pick up and use. It's easy to clean and keep clean and keep it running. And really, you can use it from anything from fine art to scale modeling, fishing lures. You could probably use these to decorate cakes. You could use it for nail art even. I mean, the uses are really limitless and, and it's just quality and easy to use. And a really good test was done by the Chrome Air, so we'll just use part of their video for comparison of two airbrush. I mean, 270 of course, more details, 0.2. And I know a lot of scale models get like, like to use it for Fine art, like you know, doing illustration, I would suggest that the secondary airbrush, because still sometimes you need to know the harder strokes and uh, mm -hmm. go a little heavier. So, 289, in my opinion, that's your first. If you're just starting airbrush, you don't want to get, you know, some people go with cheap first and realize, okay, I just wasted three times my 20, 20 bucks for times, mm -hmm. and I would just purchase a good airbrush right away. And I think this is ultimate number one airbrush, you know, if you just buy the first one. Yeah. When you kind of understand airbrush and get into it, you'll see maybe, oh, I want to move towards trigger more, if I like the you know, German airbrush a little more, whatever. I mean, that's a question of taste. But when you're starting, it's hard to go wrong with this one just because it takes most of the paints. It's uh, really good for details. It's doing uh, from really narrow to kind of, you know, thick lines. Yeah. You have one of those, right? Yeah, I have the 270 and I picked up the conversion kit as well. So maybe that's another little thing to mention is the mm -hmm. 270, if you if you want to go with the 270, you can buy the air cap, the needle and the nozzle from 289. We sell the complete set on Spray Gunner yeah. and you just pop them in and now you're spraying at 0.3, um, which is a nice little feature because I don't usually spray metallics through a point two, but through the point three, I had no issue spraying them. So. It's a little minus saving. I mean, I would uh, recommend not switching as as, as often because it's like, the small nozzles are uh, easy to damage them, easy to lose them. But uh, always better have two airbrush. Okay, the right? yeah. I mean, they're not that expensive. You have the secondary airbrush somewhere in the, no, in the bag. But if you know, if you're limited on budget, you're gonna go. You need the second size. 
And yeah, you can put a point three and point two, so I'll put both of them. And like you mentioned, you know, a lot of people do, they try to go for the cheap airbrush to start out with. And, mm -hmm. and a lot of times that just leaves a, you know, kind of like a bad taste. And you're not really getting a feel for what airbrushing is necessarily when you're getting a cheap airbrush. Sometimes they're good for certain jobs if you know you're just spraying something and you're tossing it. Um, but for like 105 and 110, it's great entry level and you're not going to have that bad feeling like, oh, what am I doing? Um, it and just feels good. You say entry level, but at the same time, you don't have to upgrade. I mean, it's from entry level. That's You've seen too. what people do. That That's and true, too. I mean, we're hard to tell for realism. And you're not really going to outgrow this airbrush, so to speak. Uh, so, yeah, you might have the second airbrush to help you, you know, with maybe 0.5 or 7, something like that, heavier, or going to 0.18 for uh, super details, but uh, that's going to be with you for, for life, I would say. Yeah, yeah I, would, I would agree. I would fully agree on that. Um, so I guess I'll oh, yeah, yeah. Put, just it back put, put it back together. If anything else you want to say, uh, I know some people there who's not really happy with this airbrush coming to the United States, been calling it knockoffs. Nothing like that. I mean, it's a genuine Japanese airbrush made completely in Japan, and uh, as far as I know, they're really, really big there. I'm not sure if they're the biggest, but uh, they just wait to come to the United States market, you know, that's it. But in uh, Japan, they were. I'm actually, I'm going to go there eventually. I've been getting ready to go to visit for, for a while. <laughs> it's, <laughs> yeah. it's about time. Right? <laughs> yeah, you had been talking about that for a while. Definitely time to give it a visit. All right, so the packing seal is back in place. Now I will personally go ahead and throw the head back in. Again, again remind yourself to keep that O-ring in place and not to pinch it or damage it when you're putting the head back on if it stayed in the body. And yeah, the airbrush itself is ready for solvent, but keep an eye on this O-ring I just mentioned because it's not uh, considered the material section, it's uh, for air and separation from the, from the airhead. So if you clean the airbrush, if you're taking it apart and you suck in this O-ring, you can uh, end up in trouble. It's because you're gonna stay clean of the solvents. Anything else, you know, the nozzle, uh, back and sc uh, screw, with a seal it's all ready for solvents, no problem there. Ooh. Come on now. Okay. And the one I did was detached from, <laughs> from the tree, yeah. imagine <laughs> that. Yeah, sometimes it just wants to move around on you a little bit, but it's it's no big deal. All right, we got the trigger in place. I will carefully put the air cap on. Be careful not to nick the nozzle or anything like that. Protective cap on right after. A lot of people, you can you can leave that as one piece and then screw that together. I just take it apart because when I clean it, I'm taking it all the way apart and cleaning each piece individually. Um, and now we will go ahead. Yeah, definitely need to clean this needle. Yeah. Needle. Yeah. yeah, probably go ahead and clean that needle. Back lever in. Now I find it's always easy, uh, easiest to put that back lever forward like that and kind of just angle it right up and in. And uh, we'll take the spring tube, tighten it down. That feels good. Needle, really dirty. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in anyways for the sake of the video. And no, I'm not because it's no, so dirty. Yeah. So what I will do is put the needle chuck screw back on. We'll pretend the needle's in there, handles on, lids on. No, pretend it's pregnant. <laughs> 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 yeah. And the needle cut. fixes the needle fixes trigger in place. So yeah, you don't want to do this. That wouldn't have happened, guys, if the needle was in there. Yeah. But anyways, but good yeah. for fish. <laughs> right. Okay. Hope was hel helpful, right? And yeah. uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask in the comments. Uh, bunch of other Russian stock. Get ready for holiday season because there might be some. Uh, sometimes we're getting out of stock, so I would suggest if you're you know, looking for a present for a Christmas, Christmas present, it's mm -hmm. time to think about it now because you will run out. It's a surprise. All right, thank you, Raj. Oh, and join our uh, Facebook group for GSI. Yeah, actually, we just started the new Facebook group uh, specifically to kind of uh, focus on the GSI rushes and create special uh, contents for uh, 
users, you know, there's going to be giveaways and interesting stuff. So yeah, links somewhere is in the, in the, in the video, yeah, whatever. Thank <laughs> right, you very much. much.